Hey guys, good morning. Coach Jen T here. I am just sitting with my snuggly blanket and my puppy and it's two days until Christmas. Um, and I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of like holiday tips when it comes to uh, sweet treats. Um, I've had a lot of my clients just saying, wow, I need a sugar detox or, you know, the treats are abundant. I can't wait to get them out of my house. Um, and you guys have to just remember that, you know, it is the holidays and, you know, the holidays are about eating those sweet treats and enjoying those sugary, whatever kind of baked goods there are. Um, so before I get the rest of the day started, I just wanted to give you guys a few tips. I literally just really quickly wrote eight tips down. Um, and these are ones that help me, but they also are um, some tips that my clients report back to me are working really well for them. So number one is not a sexy re way to cut back on sweets, but it's to just eat slowly. So I've mentioned this before, rather than shoveling in the Christmas cookies, eat them mindfully, eat them slowly. This goes for any, you know, you know, trigger food that makes you want to eat more. Um, I will say, you guys, sugar is very addictive. It provides no nutrients um, to your body, but they're very carb heavy. And eating them gives you that blood sugar spike and then crash, leaving you wanting more. So eating them slowly, mindfully, really enjoying and savoring the flavors and the textures of whatever kind of sweet treat, whether it's cake, brownies, cookies, um, candy canes, um, just slowing down will allow you to be more satisfied from less, which can be really huge when it comes to trying to cut back on the added sugars. Um, number two is to fill up on the more nutrient dense foods first. So if you haven't eaten all day or if you haven't had enough protein and vegetables and whole well-rounded meals, um, your willpower just completely goes out the window. So making sure that you are filling up the, on those nutrient dense meals makes those treats um, less tempting to overeat. Um, and you're just gonna be overall feeling good when you're making good food decisions. Like when you feel really confident in the food decisions that you're making, you're gonna be like, well, yeah, you know, a cookie or two sounds great and maybe I'll enjoy those. Um, but I don't need to eat too many of them because I made some good food choices and my, my stomach is like satisfied from getting enough protein. So fill up on the protein and vegetables first, make sure you're adding lots of nutrient dense whole foods and the way that you do that really comes down to planning ahead and having that stuff in stock and easy, making the healthy choice the easy choice. Number three is to spread the love when you have those sweet treats, you guys. So if you've got um, extra cookies and you've been baking in bulk and doing all this stuff, try to spread the love and share the foods and sweet treats you have. Um, deliver some to neighbors, bring some to your office. Um, just having those things in abundance in your home, there's no need for it when you can actually just share it, package it up and gift it to others too so that you don't have so many in your house. Um, number four is um, if you love baking and you love those treats, you guys, those cookies and desserts freeze really well. So you can package them up, freeze them, and then have them for great um, things to enjoy later when you want to thaw them. Um, for example, you can package individually like portion controlled treats, put them in the freezer and then take like one out a day so you can enjoy something every day, but not have access to all of the treats at one time. Number five, out of sight, out of mind. So, you know, what's better than having a plate of cookies on the countertop like you would a fruit bowl and being able to grab and go all day long and mindlessly munch, not knowing how many bites are adding up in the day. Um, having those out of sight so that you're not thinking about them. You know, when you open the fridge and you open it and first see something um, not so healthy, you're going to grab it and think about it and want that more versus having the healthier choices available. So um, 
Out of sight, out of mind, put those treats in Tupperware containers or put them in the cupboard or a harder to reach um, shelf in your pantry. Just so you know, if you want to go get those, you have to work for it a little bit more and you are making a much more conscious decision on that. Number six is remember those treats are not scarce, you guys. There's always going to be a next time. Um, this is not the only time you're gonna get a cookie or your only time you're gonna get a brownie. Just remember, you guys, that that mindset of feeling restricted or like your food opportunity might be scarce will make you crave more and really dwell on how you need to really fill up on that so making sure that you're just very much understanding that this is not the only time you're going to enjoy those treats and remember holidays happen all year long we've got you know valentine's day coming up and there's plenty of candy and treats there too so just remember there's no scarcity and it's not the only time you can enjoy those treats. If you have one Christmas cookie today, you can always enjoy another one tomorrow and the day after that. Um, and then number seven, I've mentioned this before, ask yourself what's worth it to you. Prepackaged candies are not really worth it to many people because they were made in a factory. They weren't made with love by grandma or your, your aunt and her pie, they're not as worth it to you if they're prepackaged. What's worth it to you? Definitely the grandma's cookies or definitely the aunt's pie or things that, you know, you get once a year. Those are the things to enjoy. And some things really are just not worth it. So take that time to pause and ask yourself, is this treat worth it? Number eight is to use healthy swaps and baking. And that is the last thing. Um, so, if you are doing some baking, you can do some healthy swaps, maybe not healthy swaps, but better swaps. Um, one would be like substituting natural peanut butter for your more commercialized peanut butter if you have peanut butter in your baking. Um, cacao nibs or Lily's chocolate chips instead of the high sugar chocolate chips. Using mashed bananas um, instead of butter can, or mashed avocado instead of butter, you can do that if you're looking for that consistency. Um, Believe it or not, you guys, you can half or really reduce the amount of sugar in recipes. Um, you can use the full sugar if you want to, but I've noticed when I'm like baking cookies, if I use less sugar than the recipe calls for, they still come out super delicious. Like you would never even know the difference. So you can reduce the sugar a little bit. Um, and then Greek yogurt is a great substitute for sour cream. Um, things that call for sour cream or cream cheese, it's a good substitute in part of your baking. Different kinds of flour like coconut flour, oat flour instead of like white flour or whole wheat flour, those are better alternatives to regular white all-purpose flour. And then of course applesauce for a substitute for oil, that's one that um, I've used and a lot of my clients have used just to like really reduce the amount of fat content in your um, food. So I hope those eight tips help you guys on sweet treats and let me know if you watch this like what your best sweet treat advice would be um, or if you struggle just know you're not alone um, and I hope these tips help you I hope you guys have a good day